What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to change the oil in a 2021 Range Rover. The first thing we're going to do is put it in off-road height, then trick it into extended height mode just to get the maximum amount of clearance for working underneath. With the Range Rover in extended height mode, just to be safe, we're going to put jack stands under all four corners just to make sure it doesn't lower on us while we're under it. You also want to chalk your wheels. We're going to need to remove this metal skid plate to get access to the drain plug. So there are going to be a total of 11 bolts we need to remove, including a couple that are kind of tucked up. Uh, so we'll need just a regular uh, spanner to get those out. Um, the remaining nine we can remove with a an impact. Now, there are two that, that are the farthest back. We, we're not going to remove them all the way. We're actually going to this one and this one, we're going to just uh, back those out and this slot, we can slide the, uh, the uh, skid plate and then pull it off. This will help us line everything back up when it comes time to put this skid plate back on. Even with the Range Rover in extended height mode, there's still not a lot of room under here. Not like with the Jeep. So that is why I'm not using uh, the Creeper. And these bolts are going to be 15 millimeter. And like I mentioned, we'll just need a regular wrench for these kind of tucked up under this uh, fascia cover here. With our skid plate removed, you can see that the drain plug is actually facing the front of the Range Rover, which is unusual. Most vehicles, it seems to be uh, rearward. But anyway, it is a 13 millimeter bolt, and um, there is a lot of oil in this thing. 9.3 US quarts. So I imagine it's going to come shooting out of there. So you definitely want to be ready with a oil pan that has a higher capacity than your engine. Um, this is a 16 quart uh, container so this should be up to the job. Uh, and make sure obviously this is closed but equally apparently you want to make sure the vent here is open. Uh, when I changed the oil in the Jeep in that one video I had forgotten to pop this thing and uh, yeah oil started to get kind of a uh, everywhere so this will help it uh, drain into the container better so make sure that's open all right well, let's see if we can uh hopefully position this thing uh correctly and not get oil everywhere as you can see i stuffed a shop rag here kind of in between the uh oil pan and this uh kind of it's like a almost a felt kind of casing on it uh, just so oil didn't drip down inside there uh, that that'll just kind of keep things a little bit cleaner without getting oil everywhere. Not 
too bad. I'm glad I have gloves on. While that's draining here, I'm going to run to the, uh, under the hood and undo the oil cap to help it drain a little easier. When it comes to oil, Land River only uses Castrol Edge Professional. This is 0W20, uh, which is what's recommended for this Range Rover. This you can find in a couple places. I found this on Amazon. They only sell it in one quart bottles. You're not going to find this in Walmart or uh, AutoZone or Advanced Auto. Um, you're going to need 9.3 quarts of this, so I had to buy 10 bottles. So we'll use nine, nine full bottles, and then we have our window on the back of there so we can kind of gauge how much to use for that last three-tenths of a quart. For oil filter, we're using a factory oil filter. There's the part number for you. I'll also put that in this description. Now this will come with a filter and a new o-ring for the filter housing. To get to our oil filter housing we're going to pop the engine cover off. It just has four little plastic bits and grommets. Just like any other engine cover. When I was buying the oil and filter for this job, I decided to plan ahead and buy an oil filter wrench as well. Went online and all the resources I saw uh, said that you need a 90 millimeter oil filter wrench. Got this on Amazon. Uh, they don't have a 90 millimeter one at the auto parts stores near me. So went online, found this one. This even says Land Rover on it. And when you flip over on the back here for applications, this is actually for a Land Rover Rage Hover. Now, I don't have the Rage Hover model. I, this is a Range Rover. Um, so that was my first clue that this wasn't going to work. Second clue was the fact that I couldn't find an oil filter housing anywhere. Um, I didn't see it sticking out in the engine bay anywhere, so I decided to look underneath. Didn't see it there either. Um, until I was messing around and realized this piece of foam just comes right off. And the housing is actually right here. Now, I'm not sure what size socket you need for this housing. My... Uh, the biggest sizes I have are a 24 millimeter, and I even have a 30 millimeter. But 24 is too small, 30 too big. So we're just going to have to improvise, and I'll just use my Knipix uh, plier wrench here. Before we start uh, removing the oil filter, I am going to tuck some shop towels all around here. I uh, don't want to get oil on everything if I can help it. So this ought to help limit that. Probably get this by hand at this point. There we go. There we go. It's in there pretty tight, just gotta pull it out, put some force on it. So we'll set that in there. And we can go grab our new filter and put that in. Before we put our new oil filter in, we're gonna remove the old o ring. Simple enough. 
and we're going to put our new one on. And as always, you're going to lubricate it with some of your new oil. So I'm just going to dip my finger in here. Don't need a ton. Just want to get, get a little layer of oil on there before we slip it on. Now we can slide that on our oil filter housing here. All right. Now looking at our new oil filter, we're also gonna just put a little bit on these two other O-rings. Should be good enough. And we can pop this in here till it clicks. Now we can put this housing, filter housing back in here and we're just gonna snug it back down. I'm not sure the uh, torque specs on this. And even if I was, I don't have a socket to get a torque wrench on there. So I'm just gonna get it snug. I'm just gonna feel how tight it is. Yeah, that feels a bit how it was when I took it off. Upon closer inspection, it does actually list uh, 25 newton meters right there on the housing. Like I said, I don't have a socket that will fit it, so I can't get a torque wrench on it anyway. I think snug will be just fine. With our filter replaced um, and pretty much all the oil drained out, we're going to go ahead and put our drain plug back in. This plug has a built-in uh, washer. Now, per the Land Rover um employee i talked to they don't replace these you just put the new one in so if anybody else has uh differing information let me know in the comments but i think you just reuse this yeah if you can see it's got that it's that black rubbery built-in washer so if you were to if you were supposed to replace it you'd have to replace the whole bolt but they said they don't so i'm not but anyway we're gonna go ahead and put this back in and I'm not really sure that my uh, idea of using shop towels to stuff in here really helped any. There's still oil everywhere. So, you know, I don't know that that's worth doing or not. There's still oil um, on this little felt thing here. Oh, well. Couldn't find any torque specs once again for this, so we're just going to snug it down, not too tight. We don't want to damage anything. So we're just going to get it so it feels nice and snug. I think that's plenty right there. As I mentioned, we're going to use 9.3 quarts of oil, so nine full bottles and then three tenths of the last bottle. So to figure that out, I've just done a little bit of math here and worked out to this point right here is about 656 uh, milliliters. So uh, once we've used three tenths out of here, there should be about 660 milliliters of oil left in here. So once the oil level is down to this middle mark right here, I should be good. And we'll just double check with the dipstick, but that should be right on the money. Say we're there. So now I'm going to go ahead and put our oil cap back on. And we're also going to put on our engine cover. Now don't forget this foam piece that you took off. And just kind of have to fiddle with it to get it oriented right. 
There we go. And it's easy enough to put this back on. The circle obviously will go right where the uh, oil cap is. There we go. So now it's time to put the skid plate back on. Uh, previously, we mentioned that uh, if you leave these in, it's a nice little way to help guide the plate in. But with that upper lip curled in the front, I think it's going to be easy to just take those out so we can kind of slide this in here rather than bending the air dam around to get there. Uh, plus, I don't want to take the whole air dam off to begin with, so that is what we're going to do. Just going to slide these out. Tuck that upper lip in, and then we can kind of locate where all our bolts are going to go. I'll just get a couple of them in. There we go. Thread this middle one in first. See if there's way to go about it. Okay, so now we can start threading all of these in. And there's no torque specs published for any of these or anything like that. So I'm just going to hit them on a uh, light, light setting with the torque or the impact gun here. And we'll call it a day. All right, all those are tight. The remaining two are these ones we kind of have to get in here and do. So those, I'll just use, be using a regular wrench here. Assuming I can even get in there. Which may be easier said than done. Good plate back on. Since Range Rover's been sitting for about 10 or 15 minutes since we put the oil in, it's had time for the oil to drip down in all the nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna give the dipstick one last check just to make sure our oil level is right where it needs to be. We are between the marks. All right, guys, we are down to the last step, and that is to reset the service required light. I don't actually have the light on because I'm only at 10,000 miles. Land Rover states that the service interval is actually 21,000 miles for oil change. I don't really want to go that long between oil changes, so I think I'm probably going to stick to changing it every 10,000 miles. With that said, I'm still going to show you how to do the reset. So we want to make sure the hood's open, or at least popped. We're going to open the driver's side door, and with the key in your pocket, we're going to climb in and push the ignition without holding the brake so that the engine doesn't start. Then we're going to hold the brake and accelerator. Okay. 
and you'll see it says service resetting. And now it says service counter reset. So we can let go, turn the ignition off, and we're done. All right, well that's it. You can go ahead and close the hood, and obviously don't forget to remove your jack stands. And that's all there is to it. It's a great way to save about 150 to 200 bucks. Um, the oil is the most expensive part. It's about $150 on Amazon for 10 quarts of that uh, Castrol Edge Profession. The oil filter is, a, is less than 20 bucks at a, a Land Rover dealership. Um, and I'm sure you can find them online as well. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, leave a comment. You know I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a good one.